Ladies and gentlemen, let's move to point 21. It's an urgent draft resolution on a renewed cohesion policy post-2027 that leaves no one behind. This is a first response of the COR on the report of the high-level group on the future of cohesion policy. And on the ninth cohesion report. So, this is the speaking list. Yes. Yes. I would like first to give the floor to our member, Emil Bock, for four minutes. Dear President, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, the European People's Party strongly support the draft resolution. Why? EPP strongly support the cohesion policy, not only because uh, cohesion policy is about jobs, prosperity and solidarity, but also cohesion policy is the long-term investment of our European Union. The EPP strongly support cohesion policy because a strong and integrated single market cannot be done without a strong cohesion policy for the future. Cohesion policy and the single market are two faces of the same coin. We cannot one without the, without the other. So in order to have an integrated and a strong cohesion policy, you need a strong single market. And the other way around, it's exactly the case. We cannot afford to leave half of the potential of the European Union to be untapped in our union. Excuse me. May I ask you to remain silent, please? Or if you want to talk, please go outside. You have the opportunity to talk. I think it's um, a question of respect for the ones who are intervening. Thank you. Mr. Bock, please. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate your intervention because it's a, this topic is so important for all of us and we are now at crossroads. Our cohesion policy is in danger. We have to be uh, clear and our message must, must be heard everywhere in Europe, in Brussels, because the future of the European Union in a way or in another depends on the future of cohesion policy. Because in the end, the cohesion policy is the glue which is keeping us together. And for that perspective, your resol our resolution is so important to be heard. Our EPP message is very clear concerning the future of cohesion policy. Cohesion policy is working, Co cohesion policy has been working, and must be maintained as a strong cohesion policy for all regions of the European Union in the future. We cannot allow any attempt to centralize cohesion policy and take over the recovery and resilience facility governance model for cohesion policy. That would be the end of cohesion policy as it is. Yes, cohesion policy in the, in the treaty cannot disappear. But what kind of cohesion policy are we going to have for the future? And what kind of Europe are you going to have it after 2027? It's important to say that we need a strong cohesion policy for all regions. And five golden rules must be maintained. First, cohesion policy for regions of the European Union, share management, place-based approach, partnership principles, and multi-level governance. And we'll, I would emphasize also how important it's place-based approach and not be replaced with one size fits all principle. That will destroy the competitive advantage of our, of our Europe. Because as is well known, cohesion policy is the best convergence machine in the world, as the World Bank said. Also Enrico Letta, the former Prime Minister of Italy said, freedom of movement is important in the European Union, but in the same time, freedom to stay is the same importance in the European Union. And in order to have the freedom to stay, nobody should be forced to leave his own region, cities, or, or country due to the economical reasons or different barriers. Here is the cohesion policy, and here is the single market together who can assure a more united Europe for all of us. In the end, I just want to, to remember us the words of Helen Keller. She said once, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. 
and this is the case for cohesion policy, this is the essence of our policy, as this is the echo of our European project of being united and together with single market and strong cohesion policy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bok. Now, member Isabel Bodinu, you have the floor for four minutes. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je ne retire pas une virgule ou un mot de ce que vient de dire le président de la Cotère, Monsieur Bock. Effectivement, avec le, le rapport du groupe de haut niveau euh, sur le futur de la politique de cohésion, avec le sommet de Mons, avec le neuvième rapport sur la cohésion, et aujourd'hui avec le rapport l'État, nous enchaînons les temps forts et les contributions qui toutes vont dans le même sens et amènent à la même conclusion. La politique de cohésion, ça marche. En réalité, cela va bien au-delà. Cette politique est centrale pour le projet européen et elle est vitale pour combattre les déséquilibres générés par le marché intérieur. C'est exactement ce qu'Enrico Letta vient de dire, je pense, devant les chefs d'État ce matin, si on s'en réfère aux excellents paragraphes qu'il a consacrés à la politique de cohésion dans son rapport. Alors elle est bien sûr un outil de convergence entre nos pays absolument remarquable et nos amis polonais, roumains et tant d'autres nous en apportent la démonstration régulièrement en Cotère ou ici en plénière. Elle est un outil d'investissement public massif et très efficace, qui maintient un tissu industriel, qui crée de l'emploi, qui maintient aussi des services publics nécessaires à la population, que ce soit dans le rural ou dans l'urbain, des infrastructures de santé, de mobilité, d'insertion, l'accès au numérique, et j'en passe. Elle est un outil indispensable qui permet de prendre en compte les vulnérabilités territoriales. Elle s'adapte aux disparités géographiques, les îles, les zones transfrontalières, les zones de montagne. A l'inverse, elle permet de s'appuyer sur les atouts particuliers d'une région, et cela avec une véritable méthode. C'est celle du partenariat, celle de la mobilisation des acteurs locaux autour d'un projet de développement local. Et ce ne sont pas des mots, c'est une stratégie construite, planifiée. C'est l'inverse du saupoudrage. C'est une façon d'embarquer tout le monde dans une vision de long terme, dans la construction d'un avenir partagé. Bref, c'est un véritable outil de compétitivité, mais intelligent et adapté. Il ne s'agit pas d'arroser toutes les entreprises avec des effets d'aubaine pour les grands groupes. Même chose pour les mesures climatiques. Il est inutile et ridicule de passer par des outils trop nationalisés quand c'est le contexte géographique qui dicte la politique. En montagne, on fera de l'hydroélectricité. Près du littoral, on fera de l'éolien. Là où il y a du soleil, on fera du solaire. Hier, on a parlé de géothermie dans les lieux où ça s'y prête. Donc par pitié, pas de retour en arrière vers une politique de cohésion en quelque sorte recentralisée, nationalisée. Car je termine par ce qui nous angoisse tous, le bruit de fond sur le souhait de certains d'utiliser plutôt le modèle de la facilité pour la relance et la résilience. Alors là, non, vraiment, ce n'est pas acceptable. C'est la négation des fondamentaux de la politique de cohésion que nous venons de voir. C'est d'ailleurs un outil étrié par la Cour des comptes européenne. La FRR a eu son utilité en temps de crise, par sa réactivité, mais c'est un outil aveugle aux réalités locales. Et comparons un peu les contraintes. La FRR, ça a été encadré par un règlement de 50 pages, écrit rapidement. Les fonds structurels, la politique de cohésion, ce sont cinq règlements de 700 pages. Alors oui, débarrassons-nous de... Débarrassons la politique de cohésion de son cadre administratif obèse, de sa surréglementation, de ses contrôles démultipliés et souvent absurdes, Avançons avec des objectifs et mesurons la réalisation finale, mesurons si la réalisation finale correspond bien à ces objectifs. Et arrêtons avec la cohorte de contrôle et de demande de pièces en tout genre, juste pour voir si l'intégralité de la dépense financière au centime près a été conforme à la programmation, ce qui souvent, trois ans après, n'a plus de sens. On verra alors à quel point la politique de cohésion sera encore plus performante, agile et efficace, et elle sera le visage d'une Europe protectrice, solidaire et porteuse d'avenir sur nos territoires. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you. Now the floor goes to member Yanis Bikes for three minutes. Godājamie kolēģi, liels paldies par sagatavoto rezolūciju. Ar vārdu kohēziju mēs uzreiz iedomājamies stabilu, plašu un mērķiecīgu atbalstu, kā grandiozu celtni, 
kuras katrs stāvs ir piepildīts ar saturu un katrs nākamais to secīgi papildina. Ietekmējot stabilu veidot pamatu, var sabrukt visa ēka. Tādēļ ir ļoti būtiski panākt savstarpēji saskaņotu un solidāju rīcību atbalstam reģionos, kurus skar un skars kardināls pārkārtošanās procesas atrodoties skardarbības ekonomiskās ietekmes zonās. Esmu no Latvijas un šo ietekmi mēs izjūtam ļoti sāpīgi, veicot lielas pārmaiņas valsts enerģētikā, ekonomikā, sociāla atbalsta mehānismos. Patreizējais plānošanas periods no 21. līdz 27. gadam tikai daļai spējas kompensēt nepieciešamās reģionālās transformācijas ietekmi ir skaidri jāizšķir, kuras no instrumentiem saglabāt un kuriem piešķirt jaunu nozīmi. Vienlaikus kohēzijas politikai jāspēja reaģēt arī uz jaunām krīzēm un izaicinājumiem un jāspēja elastīgi tiem pielāgoties, paralēli stiprinot esošos negatīvi ietekmētos sektors padarot to spēcīgākus. Kohēzijas politikā ir būtiski saglabāt pēc iespējas lielāku elastību. Eiropas Savienības ietvarā, lai dalība valsts varētu ņemt vērā teritoriālās vajadzības un spētu reaģēt uz jauniem izaugsmes izaicinājumiem un iespējām. Vienlaiku šīs it kā negatīvās pārmaiņas sniedz arī jaunas iespējas, pat precīzāk jaunas investīcijas iespējas piesaistot Eiropai jaunas uzņēmumas un darba vietas, radot labklājību un mazinot mūsu ārējo ievainojumību. Stipra valsts. Stiprs reģions, stipra vietējā pašvaldība ir būtisks spēks, kas var nesatricināms niekt priekšrocības pret negatīvu ietekmi un vēlmi izjaukt labi darbojošos mehānismu. Stiprinot kohēziju un turpinot veiksmīgi iesāktās lietas, varam sniegt tik spēcīgi signālu, ka morāli novājinātam pretiniekam atņem tā sākotnējo braurību. Tāpēc aizvien ir svarīgi, lai Eiropas Savienība spētu attīstīt spēcīgi noturīgu un uz nākotni vērstu rūpniecības struktūru, kas ļautai aizsargāt suverenitāti un palielināt autonomijas situācijās, kad startautiskā nestabilitāte ietekmē tirgus pozīcijas. Taču, lai sasniegtu reģionālās nevienlīdzības nospraustos mērķis ar rūpniecības attīstības sektoru, jāsaprot, ka tu reģionu spēja un vajadzības stiprināt, attīstīt un veidot jaunas uzņēmumus. Arī te ir tā vajadzība būt elastīgiem, pieeja par kuru es kā pašvaldības vadītājs ticu, mēs varam kopīgi vienoties, ļaujot mums izrauties, izaugt un kļūt kopīgi spēcīgākiem. Liels paldies! Thank you so much, member Pavel Branda. You have the floor for two and a half minutes. Thank you very much. I can understand everything what has been uh, said uh, by my Kotter colleagues so far, but let me also take this opportunity uh, to thank uh, the Kotter Chair, uh, Mr. Bok, and you, uh, Mr. President, for being strong defenders uh, and voice of regions at this crucial time. Uh, I think we're doing a great job, and uh, also that all you political groups are united in this crucial topic. I think it's very, very, very good. I was pleased to see that both the report of high-level group of specialists and the ninth cohesion report included some of the key recommendations of the ECR group, including the cohesion policy that should be more simplified, place-based, uh, and the better use of the principle of partnership and shared management. However, we cannot ignore uh, the seriousness of the demographic change impacting the EU. Uh, the EU must admit that the demographic transition is a third major transition, uh, equally important to the green and digital transition. According to Eurostat, the EU population will decline by almost 30 million people by the end of the century, while the old, rate, uh, old age dependency ratio will continue to worsen, putting significant pressure on our pension systems and public services. And demographic decline will affect regions more than big cities. More and more are worried about dangerous consequences of slow emptying uh, the regions. Uh, there is no uh, European Union or uh, European regions without European citizens. We urgently need a renewed strategy to ensure that regions are filled with life for the times to come, leveraging cohesion policy and recognizing the results of best practices on regional and member states level. Uh, furthermore, the transition of uh, European industries must be done in a way that ensures competitive conditions for our companies, uh, and prosperity for our citizens. Many regions are depending uh, on energy-intensive industries like the automotive sector and need guarantees for a just transition that does not compromise jobs or economic and territorial development. Lastly, I want to point out that both reports also put heavy emphasis on Europe's competitiveness and cohesion policy must uh, foster a strong economy while citizens can flourish, SMEs can grow and companies can uh, invest. The strategic technologies for Europe platform was a step in the right direction, but uh, more must be done to ensure durable growth and competitiveness. Thank you.
Thank you. Now the floor goes to Marie-Antoinette Maupertuis for two minutes. Merci, merci, pré président. Chers collègues, alors tout d'abord, je voudrais féliciter tout le monde pour la très bonne résolution basée sur la vie très solide de nos présidents Cordero et Boc. Le monde, vous le savez, change très vite. Euh, les choses s'accélèrent, les défis qui nous attendent sont nombreux. Et si la politique de cohésion a démontré son efficacité et s'est adaptée aux crises nouvelles et émergentes, elle ne peut pas tout faire toute seule. D'autres politiques doivent contribuer à une plus grande cohésion, telle que cela est prévu par le traité, réaliser la transition écologique dans les territoires en étant socialement inclusif, réduire surtout la très grosse fracture numérique entre nos territoires. Et la politique de cohésion, certes, s'adresse aux régions, aux villes, aux villages, mais il faut se le dire très clairement. La politique de cohésion n'est pas assez visible, malgré tous nos efforts. Et le mécontentement grandit dans les zones rurales et périphériques, qui sont aussi les territoires les plus en difficulté. Euh, et le rapport cohésion souligne à juste titre la nécessité d'une approche plus ciblée pour répondre à leurs besoins. Le mécontentement s'accroît aussi à cause de la charge administrative et de la réglementation. Donc simplifions, simplifions un seul ensemble de règles. La vie de nos concitoyens et de nos entreprises est déjà assez compliquée. Mais attention, la simplification, ce n'est pas la centralisation. Oui, la politique de cohésion doit évoluer, mais dans le respect des principes de subsidiarité, de proportionnalité et de partenariat, bien sûr, et surtout de gouvernance multiniveau, ça a été dit par le président Bock. Ces principes ne sont pas négociables et nous devons le faire savoir par tous les moyens que les élus régionaux et locaux ont à leur disposition. Car, chers collègues, si la politique de cohésion qui a permis tant de belles choses dans nos territoires, en complémentarité du marché unique, de la mobilité, de la circulation, de elle a permis aussi de rapprocher nos peuples et elle doit donc rester pour les années à venir au cœur du projet de l'Union. Merci beaucoup. Member Una Power, you have the floor for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you everybody for their work on this, including yourself and Mr. Bock. We know that when it comes to reducing social, territorial and economic disparities, that cohesion policy is an important, important investment tool. But it is also an incredible tool to combat climate change, and any discussion on cohesion funding must prioritise climate realities. As highlighted in point six, um, cohesion funding is a key aspect of developing localised green transition solutions. For the post-27 cohesion policy, we must aim for half of the budget to contribute to climate change adaptation and mitigation across our regions, helping, helping to halt biodiversity loss, improve water management and affect circular economy implementation through a holistic approach. New climate adaptation earmarking within the cohesion policy would be particularly important, allowing regions to take action to tackle challenges related to climate change and to build up their resilience and preparedness regarding environmental issues, such as fires, floods, droughts and other natural disasters, which will become more frequent in the future. Furthermore, no cohesion funding should be used in a way that is counter to our climate and environmental goals. To do so would be to destabilise economies in the future through climate disaster and environmental degradation. Finally, and I'll say this again, GDP alone is not an appropriate metric by which to measure the state of health in European regions. A European Policy Centre study for Reggie Committee highlighted that there is a widening economic, social and territorial divide within our union. It is clear that a better, for better performing economies and positive growth rates do not necessarily translate into better services or better quality of life for our citizens. So we must push for a more rounded approach that is inclusive of broader indicators to provide, provide a comprehensive understanding of regional well-being and, a guide, and guide more effective policy interventions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now we're going to proceed to vote. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, 
Amendment number one is on vote. Who votes against amendment number one? Abstention. Adopted. Amendment number two is on vote. Who votes against amendment number two? Abstention. Adopted. Amendment number three is on vote. Who votes against amendment number three? Thank you. Abstention. Adopted. Amendment number four is on vote. Who votes against amendment number four? Thank you. Abstention. Adopted. Amendment number five is on vote. Who votes against amendment number five? Abstention. Adopted. Amendment number six is on vote. Who votes against amendment number six? Abstention. Adopted. Amendment number seven is on vote. Who votes against amendment number seven? Abstention. Adopted. Amendment number eight is on vote. Who votes against amendment number eight? Abstention. Adopted. Amendment number nine. Is it possible to have a block vote of amendments 9, 10? No? Okay. Amendment number 9 is on vote. Who votes against amendment number 9? Abstention? Adopted. Amendment number 10 is on vote. Who votes against amendment number 10? Thank you. Abstention? Who votes for amendment number 10? Electronic vote. <clears throat> the vote is closed. Amendment number ten is adopted. Amendment 11 is on vote. Who votes against Amendment 11? Abstention. Adopted. Amendment, um, because of the impact of the amendments, we will vote first Amendment 13, then Amendment 14, and after Amendment 12. Because of the impact of the amendments, we're going to vote first Amendment 13, Amendment 14, and then Amendment 12. Amendment 13 is on vote. Who votes against Amendment 13? Thank you. Abstention. Amendment was rejected. Amendment 14 is on vote. Who votes against Amendment 14? Abstention. Adopted. Amendment 12 is on vote. Who votes against Amendment 12? Thank you. Abstention. Who votes for Amendment 12? Electronic vote. The vote is closed. Amendment 12 is rejected. Wow. Amendment 15 falls because Amendment 13 was adopted. No, it was rejected. So we have to vote Amendment 15. Amendment 15 is on vote. Who votes against Amendment 15? Abstention. Adopted. Amendment 16 is on vote. Who votes against Amendment 16? Thank you. Abstention. Amendment 16 is rejected. Amendment 17 is on vote. Who votes against? Thank you. Abstention. Rejected. Amendment 18 is on vote. Who votes against? Abstention. 
adopted. Amendment 19 is on vote. Who votes against? Thank you. Abstention? Reject. Re adopted. Amendment 20 is on vote. Who votes against Amendment 20? Thank you. Abstention? It is rejected. Amendment 21 is on vote. Who votes against? Abstention? Adopted. Amendment 22 is on vote. Who votes against? Abstention? Adopted. Amendment 23 is on vote. Who votes against? Thank you. Abstention? Rejected. Amendment 24 is on vote. If adopted, amendments 25 and 26 will fall. Who votes against Amendment 24? Thank you. Abstention? Rejected. Amendment 25 is on vote. Who votes against Amendment 25? Thank you. Abstention? Adopted. Amendment 26 is on vote. Who votes against Amendment 26? Abstention? Adopted. There is a compromise amendment. It's Amendment 27. A compromise. We're going to vote the compromise. Who votes against? Thank you. Abstention? It's adopted. Amendment 28 is on vote. Who votes against Amendment 28? Thank you. Abstention? Rejected. Amendment 30 will be voted be before Amendment 29. I repeat, Amendment 30 will be voted before Amendment 29. Who votes against Amendment 30? Thank you. Abstention? Amendment 30 is adopted. Amendment 29 is on vote. Who votes against Amendment 29? Thank you. Abstention? Who votes for Amendment 29? Electronic vote. The 30 was adopted. Yes. The vote is closed. Amendment 29 was adopted. Because Amendment 30 was adopted, Amendment 31 falls. Amendment 32 was withdrawn. Amendment 33 is on vote. Who votes against? Thank you. Abstention? Who votes for? Amendment 33 is rejected. Amendment 34 is on vote. Who votes? Is there any question? Can you make an electronic vote, please? 33? Amendment 33, electronic vote. Amendment, uh, the vote is closed. Amendment 33 is adopted. <laughs> Amendment 34 is on vote to vote against Amendment 34. 
Abstention. Adopted. Amendment 35 is on vote. Who votes against Amendment 35? Abstention. Adopted. Final vote on the urgent resolution. Who votes against the, uh, the urgent resolution? Abstention. The resolution was adopted by unanimous vote. <clears throat> We're going to move to point 20 t 22. It's the presentation and adop adoption of one opinion about the enlargement package 2023. Western Balkans and Turkey is an own initiative opinion. Our colleague Nikola Dobroslavic is the rapporteur. I would like to invite him to take his seat. The floor is yours, Mr. Dobroslavic, for five minutes to present the opinion. Thank you, President, dear colleagues. Enlargement is a matter of great significance, both for the EU and for the enlargement countries. It is not good for the EU to have a gap in the middle of its territory with disordered political and social systems. It's not good for the EU to have an unstable situation and war on its borders. This opinion covers the countries of the Western Balkans and Turkey. In the opinion, we emphasized the enlargement, that enlargement is good, both for the enlargement countries and for the EU. However, accession to the EU is possible only if the candidate countries meet all the criteria for membership in a merit-based process. All the candidate countries must align with the policies of the EU. Enlargement countries are and should continue to be encouraged and supported by incentives to implement reforms, but they must demonstrate their commitment and political will and ultimately meet all the criteria. We emphasized in the opinion that the countries of the Western Balkans have undivided support for the accession to the EU under mentioned conditions. Turkey must, first of all, show that it accepts EU values and, of course, fulfill the criteria like all the others. Turkey has also to make more progress towards normalizing the relations with the Republic of Cyprus. Democracy in the Western Balkans remains a critical challenge on which the entire future of the region and its European path will depend. Stagnation and deterioration of democracy in some Western Balkans countries is evident. For example, Bosnia and Herzegovina has not yet implemented the rulings of the Constitutional Court and the European Court of Human Rights and ensured the equality of all citizens in the electoral process and not ensured the legitimate representation of the constituent nations in government bodies. Bosnia-Herzegovina entity, Republika Srpska, must stop threatening secession from Bosnia-Herzegovina and stop disrespecting the office of the High Representative. Serbia must align with EU policies, particularly regarding sanctions against the Russian Federation, and must normalize 
relations with Kosovo. The opinion welcomes the Council's decision to open accession negotiations with Bosnia-Herzegovina and approval of the EU growth plan for the Western Balkans. Six billion euros will release the country's potential in economic and social terms. We emphasized, in the opinion, the importance of including local and regional authorities in all processes in the candidate countries and recommended cooperation with committees and working groups of the Committee of the Regions and the use of the TIEX instrument for better preparation of local and regional units for future work in the EU. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now the floor goes to member Anna Magyar for one minute. Uh, thank you. Dear colleagues, as a strong supporter of the EU's enlargement, I am very happy to see it back in the top of priority issues ahead of the European Parliament elections. Today, it is very clear that enlargement must happen. It is also in our uh, own uh, vital interest within the European Union to make enlargement happen as soon as we can. Our Western Balkan partners are moving ahead with the reforms. Great to see that Montenegro is ready to start closing the accession chapters. So I do hope that in June we will see an intergovernmental conference that will bring us uh, to this last phase of the accession negotiations with Montenegro. The growth plan for the Western Balkans should be a booster for the region to increase its economic growth and to spend, speed up the reform agenda in these countries. This means uh, the gradual integration. This means bringing the benefits of EU membership to have to the region even before accession. Thank you. This is the kind of tangible incentives I called for in my opinions on enlargement Thank before. You. I am glad to see this approach is adopted by the European Commission. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Now the floor goes to Member Klaas for one minute. <coughs> Member Urmas Klaas. Member Karajanis, you have the floor for one minute. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ κύριε Πρόεδρε, συγχαρητήρα στον εισηγητή για την γνωμοδότησή του. Όπω και θερμέ ευχαριστίε προ όσου συνυπέγραψαν τι τροπολογίε τη Κυπριακή Αντιπροσωπεία. Όσον αφορά την Τουρκία, γνωρίζετε ότι ω τρίτη χώρα λαμβάνει αρκετά δισεκατομμύρια ευρώ για αντιμετώπιση τη μετανάστευση. Και τώρα, ω χώρα μέλο τη Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση, θα ήθελα να αναγνωρίζω κατά πόσο θεωρείτε ότι κάνει σωστά τη δουλειά τη όσον αφορά την αντιμετώπιση του μεταναστευτικού προβλήματο. Όσον αφορά τώρα την πόλη των βαροσίων τη Αμοχώστου που γίνεται αναφορά και στη γνωμοδότηση, πρέπει να σα αναφέρω ότι επειδή είμαι δήμαρχο σε μια πόλη η οποία βρίσκεται ακριβώ δίπλα από την κατεχόμενη πόλη τη Αμοχώστου, συνεχίζεται κανονικότατα η άναρχη, παράνομη, οικιστική ανάπτυξη στην επαρχία Αμοχώστου και στην περιοχή τη κατεχόμενη Κύπρου γενικότερα. Και αυτή η οικιστική ανάπτυξη γίνεται πάνω σε περιουσίε Ελληνοκυπρίων και οι αγοραστέ είναι συνήθω Ευρωπαίοι. Thank you. I don't have any other requests for the floor at this moment. Mr. Dobroslavic, you have the floor for three minutes for final remarks, if you wish so. No, I will be, I will be short. I will uh, repeat that the enlargement process is good for all according to known criteria. All candidates need to ensure ownership of the accession process. The EU needs to remain credible about the timeline and concrete steps for accession. And there needs to be predictability of the enlargement process. I would like to thank everyone who contributed to the quality of this opinion. My expert, Mr. Professor Vidachak, 
my colleagues in the region, COR administration, all participants in the debates. I thank members for their amendments. There are 22 of them. We could accept most of them. Some of them were considered redundant, although not unfounded. We had to keep proportionate contribution on each enlargement country. I would like to congratulate also our colleague Antje Grotter on her opinion on Ukraine, the Republic of Moldova and Georgia. And finally, I will take the opportunity to invite members to the ninth enlargement day on 29 and 30th of April 2024 in Brussels, organized in cooperation with the Belgian Presidency of the Council of the EU. Thank you, President. Thank you. I have, we have now to vote. <clears throat> so, start the voting. Amendment one is on vote. Who votes against? Abstention? Adopted. Amendment two, who votes against? Thank you. Abstention? Rejected. Amendment three, R. If adopted, amendment three, false. Who votes against? Thank you. Abstention? Adopted. There is uh, a proposal for a joint vote of amendments four and six. I'm being told that the idea is to avoid inconsistencies in the text, in the final text, and it is why we vote both amendments together. That's it. Amendments four and six are on vote. Who votes against? Thank you. Abstention? Who votes for? Electronic vote. <coughs> the vote is closed. Amendments 4 and 6 are adopted. Amendment 5 is on vote. Who votes against? Thank you. Abstention? Who votes for Amendment 5? Electronic vote. The vote is closed. Amendment 5 was adopted. Amendment, there is a proposal for a joint vote of Amendment 7 and 8. Who votes against Amendment 7 and 8? Abstention, adopted. Amendment 9 is on vote. Who votes against? Abstention, adopted. Amendment 10 is on vote. Who votes against Amendment 10? Abstention? Adopted. Amendment 11 is on vote. Who votes against? Abstention? Adopted. Amendment 12, R, is on vote. If adopted, amendments 12 and 22 will fall. Who votes against? Amendment 12, R. Abstention? Adopted. Amendment 13 is on vote. Who votes against? Thank you. Abstention. Amendment 22, Amendment um, 13 was rejected. For the, I would vote electronically. 
Electronic vote. Amendment 13. It's very clear. <laughs> the vote is closed. Amendment 13 was rejected. <laughs> Amendment 14 is on vote. Who votes against? Abstention? Amendment 14 was rejected. Amendment 15 is on vote. Who votes against? Thank you. Abstention? It was rejected. Amendment 16 is on vote. Who votes against? Abstention is adopted. Amendment 17 is on vote. Who votes against? Thank you. Abstention rejected. There is a proposal for a joint vote of amendments 18 and 19. No opposition. Amendments 18 and 19 are on vote. Who votes against? Thank you. Abstention. Both amendments are rejected. Amendment 20 is on vote. Who votes against? Abstention. Adopted. Amendment 21 is on vote. Who votes against? Thank you. Abstention. Amendment 21 was adopted. Amendment 22 fell because 12R was adopted. That would be the last one? So final vote? Final vote on the opinion. Who votes against the opinion? Abstention. The opinion was adopted by unanimous vote. Congrats. I'm sorry. We will repeat the vote of the opinion. Who votes against the opinion? Thank you. Abstention? The opinion was adopted by a majority. I apologize. Let's move. Th congratulations to the rapporteur and to everyone involved.